Hi, everybody. Michael Bull here. Uh, today we're going to talk about digital badges, how to bring digital badges to your organization, perhaps to your classroom, perhaps to the world. It's pretty exciting stuff. Hopefully you'll find this exciting as well. Hey, don't worry, I break up the uh, videos here into sections, and I'll show you those sections in a moment. So you can start and stop as you see fit, you can skip around as you see fit, and you can always repeat as you see fit, especially if I talk too fast. Here we go. A little bit about me. Uh, I work at Concordia International School in Shanghai, China. I'm an international educator and have been for quite a few years. I'm a technology coach here for the middle school. Yeah, go middle school. Uh, if you're ever interested in teaching overseas, just shoot me an email. I'll give you that information in a moment. Uh, I am an American, so I hang out in uh, Oregon during the summers. And as you can see, that's a picture of the happy family at a place called Crater Lake. And so that makes me a father, parent, and husband, as well as a tech coach. Yeah. Okay. Next up, here's how you can get in contact with me. You can always follow me at Autism Podcast. Uh, I used to, I used to, currently, and still do have a son with autism. So in the past, I did a podcast about autism, hence the name. Uh, you, can, you can contact me by email, michael at innovativepd.com. You can always check in with me at LinkedIn. Uh, my website address is michaelbowl.me. And by the way, you'll find a bunch of resources there. And if you want to listen to a regular podcast that I do with two other people here at Concordia, check us out, podcast.concordiashanghai.org. Here's the takeaways. And each of these below, this is what uh, we're going to, this is where I'll break up the videos. So each of these will be separate sections. So this will give you the opportunity to skip around as you see fit. First section is what is digital badges? Uh, it's kind of good to explain what the whole thing is. A lot of people, are, I find, are still unfamiliar with it. That's fine because it's pretty new. Uh, knowing the tech behind the digital badges, how to get all that working, the nerdy stuff. Uh, bringing badges to your classroom. So if you want to bring it to your individual classroom, totally possible. If you have the ability to bring it to an organization, such as your school, your school building, your district, or whatever you want to call it, uh, we'll talk about that. That's what we do here at Concordia International School. As a tech coach, I don't have a class specifically, so I, I'm more motivated to bring it to an organization. Then we'll talk about the future of badges. It's pretty cool stuff there. It gives us a reason to adopt badges in the first place because the future it looks awesome. Uh, if you want to find this particular presentation, including a bunch of other links and resources, you can do that. Just head to my website, michaelbowl.me. And as you can see here, you just go to presentations and workshops. Click on one hour plus workshops, and then here, bring badges to your classroom or school. Let's understand these digital badges. Let's figure out what they're all about. Here's a bunch of examples right here of digital badges for a organization called the Learning 2.0 Organization. It's here in Asia. It's going to be hosted in Singapore this year, actually. And these are badges that are awarded to people who participate in that event, doing different things. Let's introduce open badges. We can thank the Mozilla Foundation, really, for taking badges to a whole new level. Badges, recognition, and let's say ribbons, they've been awarded for thousands of years. We can look back to the Romans and before to see examples of badges and medals that were given to people. The point of badges is to encourage positive behavior for a group or society or an organization or whatever you want. If you give people public recognition, they will be very happy and they will quite likely repeat that behavior. Uh, the difference here with the digital badges is that this a badge you award can now be stored for the student or the individual forever, we'll see, long time at least, and then it can be displayed on various web presences all over the world. Pretty nifty. It's free and open because it's uh, open source and the uh, Mozilla Foundation is nonprofit. You can take your badges with you. You can knit your skills together so you can have different organizations award you a badge. And they're full of information, something called metadata, which is a way for, uh, see, individuals or hiring organizations to do due diligence and to be able to check back and verify that this is a real badge. There we go. This infographic totally explains it, right? Here it is, right there. And I'll break this infographic down in a moment. If you want to hear some more information, you can always go to a podcast I did with Emily Goligowski. Uh, she works for the Open Badges group at the Mozilla Foundation, and we talked for about 30 minutes all about badges. It's pretty cool. I enjoyed that interview quite a bit. You can get to it by clicking on here, and you can get to it from our website, podcast.concordiashanghai.org. Welcome to another Concordia like. EdTech podcast. That. We'll make you endure all that. All right.
this is that infographic. We're breaking it down. Here we go. So these are the awarders, the people who can award the badges. By the way, anybody can award a badge. Mozilla just hosts all this stuff. They just host the backpack. They have nothing to do with who can award a badge or uh, proving whether a badge should be awarded or not. That's totally up to you. So you could have a chef school or let's say a regular school, perhaps where you are. Uh, let's say you're an online teacher. Let's say you were just a community and you wanted to encourage people to participate in their volunteer program. All these people can award badges. But when they award that badge, it goes to the learner here, perhaps one of our students, and then they, because of Mozilla Foundation's Open Badge Pack program, can put it in a badge backpack. Cool. Got the award sitting in a backpack. What do I do with that badge now? And here we are. From the badge backpack, the learner or awardee or person or whatever you want to call them can then display that badge. It's cool to be publicly recognized, but it's even cooler to be able to show other people you've been publicly recognized. It sets you apart from other individuals and gives you something to strive for and gives those individuals something to strive for. From the badge backpack, the learner at their choice, they totally decide what they want to display. Maybe they want to display stuff from high school now, and maybe when they're 20 years older, they don't want to display the high school stuff. Or maybe they do, because it's fun to go retro. Anyways, they can display it on their website, Facebook, Twitter. This is WordPress here. Yeah, they can print it out if they want as well and put it up and have it as a, I don't know, a plaque or something in their room. And the idea behind this is then that it will create job opportunities, because people will be able to search for badges. Uh, it'll show your lifelong learner and unlock new possibilities that's probably where we are right now because this whole digital badge concept is pretty new. It's got a long way to go. And if you get involved with it, you'll be on the cutting edge. And that's the kind of person you are, right? I hope so. All right, here's the whole infographic together. Again, we have people awarding. The learner goes to Badge Backpack. They display it, and their life has changed forever. Right? Right. All right, here's the metadata. This is a sample. So, for example, at Concordia, we award students uh, a badge here for something called the Will Foundation. It's a community service organization. And they do 20 plus hours or more service hours and they get this badge. Now, if I want, I can click on their badge, wherever they display it from, I can click on that and I get this metadata. So this is the data behind the badge, which makes it a little bit different. And it allows me to verify that badge. I could contact Concordia right now and say, hey, did Joey really get that 20 plus service hours badge? And the person at Concordia will say, well, yes, of course he did. Uh, in the real world, a more practical use might be if I claim that I'm like a level three programmer for Ruby on Rails or something like that, I could put the organization, let's say Stanford, that issued that badge to me, and then you as the employer could verify that and contact them if you want to. It doesn't mean people do that. It just means there's an opportunity to do that. Generally, we take each other for our word, right? All right, this video does a nice job of explaining everything I just talked about. It's put together by a young person. It's pretty awesome. Enjoy. When we're done with this video, we'll move on to the exciting stuff, the tech of badges. Learning today happens everywhere. At school, outside of school, at your friend's place, in online MOOCs, at your local art museum. The possibilities are endless. Yet being recognized for all the projects you're passionate about is, well, difficult. Transcripts and resumes don't always paint a complete and vibrant picture of all you can do. Say that you're learning to speak Italian and that you're also taking an online course to learn how to build a website about your love for Italy. On the weekends, you teach kids in your neighborhood how to cook traditional Italian food. You're busy learning a lot between in-person instruction, online videos and mentoring other people. What if you could be recognized for all you do? What if your passions could be stacked alongside your work and academic achievements? Well, Mozilla's Open Badges were created to help you do just that and get recognized for all you do online and offline. You've probably earned physical or digital badges before. Open Badges are similar in that they can help you celebrate skills you've demonstrated. 
but these have much more than just a pretty picture. Open badges are information rich, which means they carry loads of valuable data and can be displayed all around the web. They include something called metadata. Think of metadata as lots of information that can tell you what makes something special, like a photo. Its metadata could let you know where it was taken and what type of camera was used. With open badges, metadata contains information that is uniquely tied to you, including the issuer who gave you the badge, the criteria you had to meet to get it, and the delicious work you submitted. You can earn badges from many issuers, including educational organizations, companies, non-for-profits, and people with knowledge to share. As you take courses and gain knowledge, you can use what is called a backpack, an online dashboard where you can store your badges and create collections. You can then choose to display badges you're proud of across your social and professional networks, blogs and portfolios. Then family, friends and even potential employers can check out your work and support you as you pursue new learning opportunities and jobs. Thousands of organizations and individuals around the world are already contributing to Open Badges. Come along and join us. Let's celebrate your success together. Time now to talk about the tech of putting these badges together. Uh, this can be, I, you know, I really don't think it's that difficult, um, but I'm a little bit nerdy. But uh, if you find this stuff stressful or difficult, then make sure you hook up with a technology coach or somebody of that sort at your school or your organization or wherever and uh, get them to help you. It's pretty cool. Or feel free to contact me if you need some help. Here we go. Uh, you know, the first thing you need is a badge idea. Like, what are you going to use a badge for? If you're a classroom teacher, you can probably think up of lots of ways that you want to give recognition for your teachers. If you're a technology coach like myself, then you can come up with some ideas, but you're really going to need to find ideas or to encourage people to create ideas on their own because there's just such a variety. Here's some of the examples that you can see that my school uses. And, you know, the PE department, great place to award badges. Totally makes sense to have the PE department do it. They're familiar with that. I've got the grade 8 team working on it, the grade 5 teams working on it, and other organizations and other groups as well. These are just three that I happen to list here. All right, then you need to actually have a badge. And here you can see here are some sample badges. Uh, nothing too super hardcore. This is for uh, a professional development uh, uh, program that we have here at Concordia where people can get badges for finishing courses and for doing courses and for being a member of a various Harry Potter groups. Yeah, I know it sounds a little weird, but, but seriously, it, it works pretty well. And so these are what some badges can look like. But you need a badge designer. Now we have a teacher here at Concordia that will design badges for us, but you might want to find a student that can do it, especially older ones. That can be pretty nifty. If that's not available or you just want to get rolling it yourself and just get it going and just get round one up and running, you can always, always use openbadges.me. It's a free service and it's easy to create badges there. Great site. Check it out. Then you have options. Once you've made the badge, you've decided what the badge is, you've made the badge, then it's going to be time to host the badge. And this is the group that sends out or holds the badge in place that you upload the badge to and sends it out to the award recipient. You actually do the sending, but they, you link it to the badge that is in this group. Now, you can do it yourself. You can have yourself host it, and that's what we do at Concordia. And that's a little more technical. You're going to need uh, technology resources. You're going to need server space. You're going to need uh, a WordPress space, things like that to get it done. If you have that going on, great. But look, if you're just a classroom teacher and you want to just get started with this and you don't want all this back-end tech stuff, just go to badge.us, B-A-D-G.us. They'll hold the badges for you and make it really easy to award the badges. Great service, totally free. All right. 
if you are doing the badging yourself, yourself hosting it, uh, I recommend this particular uh, uh, plugin. This will allow you to issue badges. It's called WP Badger. Uh, it's been around for a little while, and it's really the only WordPress plugin that I know of that works independently of any other group. So if you just click on this link, it'll take you off there, and you can see WP Badger, and you can download that and install it if you know it. No problem. Oop, let me get back to the keynote here. There we go. Uh, here's the Mozilla backpack, and so everybody will need to create an account with Mozilla in order to get up and rolling, not just open uh, badges.org, and you'll need to have every student or individual receiving a backpack, excuse me, an award, create their backpack so they can put it in their backpack. So make sure you check that out. Uh, badge display, there's lots of options. You can display it in a WordPress using the plugins that I mentioned. Uh, you can have people display it on their Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, or on their Twitter account. Now right now, you can, it's easy to have it automated so it shows up on a student's or a recipient's uh, WordPress page using a plugin. You still have to do it manually with Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Now Mozilla says, and they've been saying this for a little while, that they're having high level talks, whatever that means, with some of these organizations so that if you are awarded a badge in your digital backpack and you put it in, you can at that point, as a learner, as an award recipient, decide, hey, look, I want to put this on Facebook and it will automatically go out to your Facebook and hang out there. Or perhaps your LinkedIn, which might be the most appropriate place if you're a little bit older. That will be coming soon, I hope. We'll see. I can imagine that these services would want to integrate with this, with this backpack concept. This is another WordPress plugin called WP Badge Display. It's made by the same guy who uh, made the other plugin I just referred to. And you can check that out if you want. The link's down there at the bottom. This will allow you to have your students in WordPress automatically display badges. So they are awarded a badge, they say, yes, I want to display this publicly, and dink, it shows up on their WordPress website. It's great, totally easy, totally simple, automates the whole process. Uh, here's what we do here at Concordia. This is our process and how we go through it. Again, we are issuing our own badges and hosting our own badges. Here we go. Step one is there's a location on our website for teachers to fill out a request for a badge. Now, I don't get involved in what an appropriate badge is, what an appropriate badge isn't. I might get involved with encouraging people, well, I mean, I do, to do badges and providing suggestions on badges, but I don't curate them. That's not my role. That's their role. My role is to help out and facilitate a process that makes it easy for them. We always want to reduce friction and make things as easy as possible for teachers. We want to lower hurdles as much as possible for teachers. The more difficult you make it, the less likely it's going to happen. So anyways, they fill out this request form. Great. Then I, we get an email, and then the tech department goes, hmm, do we have this badge already? Perhaps the teacher's already created this badge. Let's say it's for getting 100 sit-ups in under a minute or something, and they now have student number 45 who wants that badge. No problem. If we don't have the badge yet, then it's time to create the badge. Again, we have an individual at our school that likes doing badges. That's cool because I'm terrible at badges, and he makes them for us, and then we rock and roll. You could go back and make it yourself, or you can use openbadges.me to automate that process a little bit. You still have to manually do it, but at least they do the artwork for you. Then an email is kicked out to the students, and it looks something like this. And this is done through the WP Badger uh, plugin that we use and you can customize what this email looks like. This is, hey, congratulations, you have an email. Click on this link here, uh, and you'll be all set and rocking and rolling. If you're doing this for the first time, I created a, a tutorial on the website, and it shows how to set it up step by step, and that's what students can do. Uh, seventh and eighth grade students can do it independently, pretty much. Fifth and sixth grade students, they usually will need help. High school kids can do it on their own. Teachers, teachers always need help. So seventh grade and above, they're fine. Teachers? Did I just say this? Yeah. They always need help. Uh, from there, this is what the backpack looks like. The student accepts the badge and places it in the Mozilla backpack. And you can see over here on the left, they can create collections and they can drag, oops, I should, let me click back here. They can drag a badge over into this collection area. And at that point, they choose whether to make the uh, badge public or not. If they make the badges public, then it's going to show up on their website. And you'll see that here in the next slide. So for example, this student here was issued the Will Foundation badge. They just said, yeah, and they accepted it, all is good, and wow, right away it shows up on their website. They don't have to do any more. 
They do have to set up the backpack like we talked about in the beginning, but that's about it. Once they've got that backpack up and rolling, then they choose to dis they decide to accept or deny the badge. Most kids accept it. They decide whether to put it into the collection that's in a public space. All kids do that now. But 10 years from now, you may want to pick and choose which badges you want to show publicly. And Mozilla's backpack makes that pop happen, makes that possible. Uh, then you get an email from a student sometimes says, hey, hey, I figured it out. This is awesome. This is uh, from a sixth grader. And she was able to do it on her own just following the tutorial. I didn't have to help her individually. It's pretty cool to see a kid do it on their own without additional help. Probably a pretty sharp kid, though. Uh, here's some resources you can use for tech. Uh, we're doing it at the Learning 2.0, which is called the Learning 2013 Conference here in Singapore. If you were to click on this link, you can go up to here, and you'll see something about digital badges and setting it up. You can also go to badges.concordiashanghai.org, and it shows our process for awarding dis badges, displaying badges, and we show off some of the people that are using badges as well. It's a great resource. It's got lots of step-by-step -step tutorials for how to log in, how to create backpacks, etc. Please feel free to use it. It's totally available, totally free, totally there. Have a good time with it. Next up, we're going to talk about badges in your classroom. Stay tuned. All right, here we go. So we have a totally awesome understanding of how badges work, how the tech of it works, right? We have an understanding of the concept of badges and uh, what the idea is behind it. Now all that we want to do is we want to use them, right? And if you are an individual classroom teacher, there's no better place to start than your classroom. We generally have control over what happens in our classrooms. We can have some control over the tech in our classrooms. We don't need to ask anybody's permission. We just need to go for it, right? Okay, let's do that. I mean, badges are great. Why would you want to go for it? So you need to brainstorm some ideas. Come up with some ways that you can use badges in the classroom. Again, here are some we use at Concordia. PE teachers use it for running the mile, for doing push-ups, for doing sit-ups, for reaching some sort of objective number. Uh, the grade 8 team uses it. They do a lot of filming. And if somebody becomes an uh, expert at camera angles, let's say, for example, they get a badge for that. The grade 5 team uses badges to get kids motivated with typing. Pretty cool. They hit 40 words per minute, 25 words per minute, they get a badge. Fifth graders love this stuff. Also, if they work in a service organization or if they get 100% on their math facts or something like that, we created a badge for that. Great. Uh, the elementary school uh, has a bunch of tech coaches. They have a professional development program going on, and if teachers, and I think you've seen these badges, uh, pass some of the classes, finish classes, put in various efforts, whatever, they get a badge. It's funny to watch teachers. They really like badges. Kind of remind me of fifth graders. And that's okay. That's what we love about teaching. It's fun. Uh, we have a Mandarin, Mandarin program here, and so they award uh, badges for kids to read certain numbers of books uh, achieve certain levels within tests, etc. know certain numbers of words, whatever. I mean, the list can go on and on. The idea behind badges is, of issuing a badge is actually pretty simple. It's making it all happen. That's a little more complex. Here's my suggestion. Start with one badge, something simple, something easy. It can even be member of my classroom, whatever you can think of. Or maybe something uh, objective, again, like uh, passing a certain number of uh, daily oral language tests or math tests or, or whatever you want to do. Something that kids can aim for and shoot for. If they are have a clear understanding of how to earn the badge, it's much more likely they'll attain it. And you can encourage people along the way. Test the process. Maybe award a badge to two students in the beginning who can be your testers. Because when you first start any technological program, and you probably already know this, things fail all the time. That's just part of technology. And while the nerds of the world, we really enjoy that and figuring out what it is, normal people, they'd rather go read a good book or talk to their friend than deal with all these tech issues. So rather than rolling it out for your entire classroom at one time, perhaps you'll want to test the process, test the batch with just a couple kids to work through it. And then once you're confident, you can move on from there. Then you can always add more badges later. Here's some more of the badges that we have at Concordia. You can see the ones from the PE department here, Sit and Reach. Uh, you can see the ones from the Mandarin department here, and these are the ones that we award to teachers. We have a lot more badges than this. I just threw some up. Uh, it's pretty easy to use badges, to create badges, to put badges up. It's harder to encourage people to award them, strangely, to make that part of their classroom. And that would be something you would do as an individual in your classroom. Here's some suggestions. You ready? Write this stuff down. 
Actually, don't because it's right here and you don't have to. And you can always grab the keynote from my website, michaelbowl.me. Don't forget about that. Everything's available there. First thing, and we talked about this already, badge awards are objective. It's easier to make them objective than subjective. It's easier to say if you show up on time to class 400 times or 20 times or what have you, you get a badge. It's harder to say if you're good in class, you get a badge. That's uh, difficult for kids to understand. Actually, it's even harder for adults to understand. Make it a valuable currency. So, you know, the dollar, or for example here, so I'm in China, let me pull out my wallet here. So in China, we use something called the RMB or the renminbi, and this is it here. And if you think about it, it's just a piece of paper, same with the US dollar, it's just a piece of paper. But we have faith that this currency, that this has some currency, that this has some value. So since so many people have faith, I'm able to use this for transactions, right? It's the same thing with badges. You want badges to be a valuable currency, that getting the badge is a big deal. If you make it too easy for everybody to get every single badge, then it's not as valuable and people won't want to jump to get it. In high school, they give letterman, letters, like letterman jackets, right, for if you're on a varsity sport. It's not that easy to get one. And therefore, the people who get it, they wear that, that uh, varsity or letterman jacket around and show off and say, look at me, look at these... Uh, uh, awards that I got. I am cool. And then everybody else looks at him and says, yeah, that person's cool. Uh, I do suggest making it easy to get the first one, it's sort of a gaming technique that everybody can get it pretty easily to get them excited and let them know that it is possible to get badges. But make sure it's harder to get future ones. And you'll want some also that are way at the top that very few kids can achieve. Those will be the ultimate ones for people to strive for. Those will be the ones everybody will want to show off. Think about the mil military. Congressional Medal of Honor, number one badge, right? You have to do an incredible number of things to get there. Very few people get it. In fact, most people get it posthumously after dying. So that sort of one, when it's given, is a big deal. It makes the news, etc. Same thing with your badges. If you have one or two that are really hard to get, in addition to easier ones, as kids level up, it'll make it that much more interesting for them. Ensure that the badges are easily displayed. So we've talked about that in some of the tech but the kids have to be able to display their badges. You can have them print up the certificate, the badge, whatever, so that they can display it directly in the classroom and also have it digitally. Now, it's not like it's mutually exclusive and you have to have one or the other, but people need to be able to show off what they've earned. Otherwise, that currency area here isn't as valuable because you can't tell anybody about it. Introduce new badges, new badges on a regular basis to keep excitement up. Sometimes uh, kids will feel like they can't achieve a badge and they just sort of give up great time to throw in some new badges that are achievable. Put your tech coach to, coach to work. If you need help with this sort of stuff, find your tech coach, your tech support person, or whatever. Have them help you. Get them involved. Don't let them say no. That's not what tech coaches are supposed to do. They're supposed to say, yeah, let's do it. That's exciting. I'm so thrilled by it. Let's talk now about bringing badges to your school, to your organization. You're one of those people that can influence things and make change. Perhaps you make waves. Perhaps you annoy people. Perhaps you're so good that everybody just listens to what you say. Either way, we're going to talk about how to get those badges rolling with your group of people that you hang out with. For me, this is the process I like to go through. Find those early adopters. Find people that love new things and that are motivated or excited by new things. Also find people you have a good relationship with, someone who trusts you. Uh, in schools, when it comes to technology, often it's these people. They're a little bit nerdy. They like that new, exciting challenge. Maybe they're socially awkward. I don't know. But if you can find those early adopters, they will help you to create a domino effect, where when you get them going, it'll be the next one and the next one. There's a curve that talks about new adoptions, and there's always the early adopters in the beginning who are influencers, and then everybody else starts to adopt it, and then the late adopters come in. So get those early adopters rolling. It's a great way to test the system as well, because there'll be lots of mistakes in the beginning, and they will be more likely to be patient with it. Start small, start in one classroom. I started with the PE teachers. Actually, they just took off from there. I was like, whoa, slow down. But I didn't want to say that, but I was thinking that. Instead, I had to catch up. But I started with one group of people to test the system. Found tons of mistakes, got it worked out, got a nice process set up and going so it would scale out to a larger group. So start small, start with a couple, get a process in place, and scale it up. Uh, I talked a little bit about the process that Concordia uses to award badges. 
in an earlier part of this presentation. So you can feel free to go back and watch it if you want. Or, of course, you can always go to badges.concordiashanghai.org and check out our processes there. Locate a badge designer. Look around. Try and find one. I found one at my school. It's cool. He likes doing it. So far, I keep throwing a lot of work at him. So far, he's happy. I hope that continues. There's always openbadges.me, which we talked about earlier, if you don't have a badge designer. See if you can get one in place. It's more fun if it's somebody here within your organization that's local. Then it's time to get admin support. Now, some people might think you'd want to get admin support right away. I don't agree. I think it's better to test out a system and see if it's feasible to get it up and running on a small basis and then go to the administration and say, hey, check this out. This is pretty neat. Here's what I've been doing so far. I want to scale it. I want to get to a larger area. Uh, what do you think of this idea? Can you lend me support? It's important to get the admin going behind it, and generally they will. This is about recognition. It's about recognizing people who are doing successful things. That's what admin's all about, right? They always want to recognize the people for their good behavior. Well, hopefully. My admin does, but I'm pretty lucky maybe. Who knows? So talk to your administration and see what they think about the concept because you may need to get some support for them to get the technology behind it up and rolling. Sometimes uh, those technology people can be a little resistant to new ideas because they're worried about things or afraid it's going to break something. And if you can get your principal to help you out, you'll be okay. Well, more likely. Then it's time to secure some tech resources. If you're going to do this on a, a wider scale, you might want to have uh, some server space at your school. You could always use badge.us. That works as well if you want to keep it outside of your school's resources. But I use WordPress, and we have location on our WordPress servers. All of our students here at Concordia have a WordPress website, and everything gets kicked in through there. So it makes the process a lot simpler. If you're not a WordPress person, maybe you might want to become one, or again, back to badge.us. Time for marketing. So you got this cool idea, you got a few early adopters, you think you're done, you can either just hang out and get frustrated that nobody's listening to my idea, or you can take action and start doing marketing. You have to sell your idea, you have to spread it, in the words of Seth Godin, like a idea virus. The person who can spread ideas is the one who wins. And in order to spread that idea, you need to do marketing. If you're not comfortable with marketing, go get comfortable with it. Here's some ideas. Lobby people to join. You've got your early adopters going, right? Time then to spread from there. Start bugging people. Hey, have you seen this program? It's set up. It's up and rolling. It's rocking. i got some ideas for you. Where do you say you adopt it? Generally, people will say yes to the concept of badges. But getting them to actually do it to change the routines in the classroom can be a little bit more difficult. It requires some gentle nagging, maybe a gentle nudge or two. And if you have a relationship with these people, they'll probably say, yeah, yeah, I'll do it, I'll do it. And if you volunteer to come in and help them, then they're more likely to do it. You just have to get that habit in place for teachers. We're pretty habit-oriented people. And if we get a new process in our involved or coming to us, sometimes we can be a little bit resistant. But once it's in, it's in. I mean, who doesn't want to wear badges? That's fun, right? Make sure it's a grassroots effort. Try to get everybody from the bottom and pull them up through. You'll find badges, at least for me, more successful if you encourage people to do it rather than yell at them or force them to do it, right? Uh, develop a process. And above is a link to what our process is, and I think I've talked about this before, so that it's easy and simple for people who want to create and award a badge to do it. So they just all they have to worry about is thinking of the badge, creating the badge, maybe describing what it looks like, who should they award it to, and how should they manage it in their classroom. They don't have to worry about all the other outside stuff. They just say, go, and it happens. If you can make it that simple for people, you're more likely to get adopters beyond the early adopters who don't mind the hassles, right? I publicize adopters. You know, you've seen this slide before, but whenever possible, and I see some new ideas coming, I put it up on this page. I do send out a weekly news tech letter, or we actually all do here as tech coaches at Concordia, and we like to publicize people who are using badges. Then it becomes a movement. As soon as you can get two, three, four, five groups going, then the movement will start taking root. And then you can say, hey, look what everybody else is doing. It's working well for them. People have a lot of new ideas coming at them. And to help them sort through what are the good ideas and the bad ideas, they'll turn to their neighbors and people they respect and say, what do you think of this? And if you can get a few of those people to say, this is awesome, then they're more likely to adopt it. We're going to talk about the future of badges next. Stay tuned. All right, welcome to the last section of today's uh, online discussion. 
Uh, now we're going to talk about the future of badges. And this is where it kind of gets exciting and some of the reasons that you'll want to perhaps adopt badges. Uh, maybe you don't see the opportunities yet, or maybe the opportunities that are available now aren't enough, but the future holds a lot of cool stuff. Again, we're right at the beginning of this whole open digital badges concept. Uh, one day, perhaps, digital badges will replace the resume. You know, if I send a piece of paper to somebody, yeah, it's kind of cool, it's a bit of a static thing, and they can't really click on it, they can't check things out, and the information on the uh, resume, it's verifiable, I mean, I can call and make some calls and check things, but it doesn't have the metadata and the information that a badge has. So will this happen like this? Will it replace the resume? It might in the future. Something to think about. If we can get our students up and rolling and interacting with this type of uh, recognition now, think about how cool that is for their future. All right. Uh, you can use it for getting credit. So if you're taking one of those MOOCs, those massive open online courses, uh, you know, you don't really have a relationship with a MOOC in the sense that you show up at their uh, building. It's all done online. And these badges are a great way for these groups to show that you've completed courses and that you've earned various skills. Perhaps getting uh, a badge from Coursera saying that you are a level four. Remember I talked about this Ruby on Rails programmer or you are a level three uh, psychologist. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Getting that badge with that metadata, putting that on your uh, digital resume, putting that on your website into your LinkedIn account, whatever, will help you to get jobs or opportunities in the future. MOOCs will use badges a lot. Uh, this becomes <clears throat> a virtual online certificate. Uh, it's easy to send somebody a certificate, have them post it, but what do they really do with it? Well, if somebody's achieved something, you can award a certificate instead of a certificate. Really, you can award a badge. Badges are great. Uh, it's proof of skills. So if I'm looking for a programmer, again, I keep using that, but if I'm looking for a programmer or a teacher, I can run through LinkedIn and see what badges people have that are associated with their skills. So I could pull up all the people that are level two Visual Basic programmers because I need somebody to teach Visual Basic. And then that narrows it down. And I can say, ah, let's see where they got their uh, badge from. Oh, I see, they got it from MIT. Ah, well, let me make sure that's true. Let me check the metadata. Okay, yeah, it appears to be true. Allows me to do that due diligence. What a great way to go as an employer. Or an employee looking for a job, right? Sets you apart, especially now. Again, we've talked about it. This is the metadata. No need to go over it again ad nauseum, but it does show or lets organizations see where this badge came from. Here's some uh, information, uh, some press releases. Uh, the Clinton Global Initiative is starting to use badges to help one million students and one million U.S. workers access opportunities through badges. Uh, these are clickable links. If you download the keynote, from, keynote, this keynote from my website, you can click on them. Uh, Blackboard. You may have heard of that. They're a large online or learning management system, a content management service system for schools and other organizations. Uh, they have adopted the Mozilla Open Batch Framework. Big deal for them. And you can see Mozilla, Blackboard, WCET, Sage Road Solutions, etc. They've adapted badges as well. So it's starting to maybe get some traction. We'll see. See what the future holds. Again, this is all thanks to the Mozilla Foundation. Free, open source. You'd think I work for them though, or get money from them with the amount of uh, good things I've been saying, but I don't. I do like Firefox, though. Maybe you've used that browser. They make it. Uh, here's what I've learned. So every time I do some initiative, I learn a lot of things, mostly from mistakes. So for example, I learned where the egg should go and where the shell should go. Do you like this picture? Uh, reducing friction, I mentioned this earlier, but the easier you can make things, the better. You want to make it really simple. So you want to be the fish on the right, cruising along with everybody helping you. You don't want to necessarily be the fish on the left. You will be in the beginning because you're trying a new idea. But if you can reduce friction and make it easy, then everybody's going to follow you. Or they're more likely to follow you. Think how cool that is. You should get a badge for, like, getting people to follow your ideas. That'd be a great badge. Uh, expect failures. Embrace them. They're going to happen. If you don't have failures, then you're not trying something new. It's totally normal to get failures. So build in a little time for those failures. Again, that's why you start small with maybe one teacher or at one badge if you're an individual teacher already, and then you can scale it up and make it large from there. And then as the failures hit you, it won't have as big an impact because you're working with smaller groups. Embrace resistance. You're going to get resistance to this idea. Every idea that is any good should get resistance. If you don't get resistance, people saying, oh, that's not gonna work, oh, nobody will ever do this, etc., etc., then you're not trying anything new. 
got to embrace resistance. You got to expect resistance. It's awesome. Actually, it's terrible. I hate resistance, but I have to embrace it because then I know I'm on the right track and that people are resisting a new idea and a change and I'm actually pushing an organization somewhere, hopefully the right direction, not off a cliff or something. Anyway, uh, iterate. In other words, take it step by step. Do a real basic concept, a real basic rollout, check it out, see what happened, evaluate it, and then make the next one better and the next one better. It's not fair to roll something out and find out there's some problems and then beat up on yourself and say, it's just not going to work. That was a dumb idea. Rather, you're learning from that iteration. You're looking for ways to improve and make it better. That's why you have version 1, version 2, version 3. In the software world, this is totally normal, and it should be normal in the education world as well. Stay in touch. That's all I've got for you guys. Uh, if you want to follow me again on Twitter, Autism Podcast, you can email me, michael at innovativepd.com. Check out my LinkedIn, websites michaelbull.me, and the podcast where we talk about a lot of exciting stuff in ed tech. That's podcast. You like my voice? My podcast voice? Podcast.concordiashanghai.org. Hope you enjoyed this. Have a great day.